Hello, in this next video, I'm going to show you a little more typical process how to create a release. So please do know that the process of creating a release is going to be more complex and complicated than doing the clay pot. So if you choose to do this, please know that it will probably be more time consuming and challenging. The materials that you'll need are basically the clay. I like to use a portable surface uh, but when I'm doing a relief. A relief will be more time consuming and you may not get it all done in one sitting. And so you'll want to have that portable surface so that you can pick it up, put it inside of a plastic bag and feel the bag, like try to suck the air out of it and feel the bag so that you can let it sit without it drying out, okay? So that's pretty important for this process. Um, to create the slab that um, your relief is made from, you will need something like a rolling pin. Um, if you don't have a rolling pin, you can just kind of do it by hand, but it won't be as smooth and everything probably, but that's okay. You could use other things um, like a wood board to flatten it, whatever you can think of. Um, and then you can use a ruler and a knife to go around the edges and cut that outer shape, okay? Um, you'll want some water handy so that you can dip your finger in it, wash off your tools, that kind of a thing. Water just helps to keep the clay moist. You could even have a spray bottle of water. I always, when I'm working on a project that takes a little bit longer, I like to keep water in a spray bottle nearby so that I can um, douse it with water every now and then, not heavily, but just a little bit to keep the clay moist because once it dries, you can't work it any longer. And I usually spray it just before I put it into the plastic bag as well. The um, sculpting tools, um, anything that you have around your house that you can think of, pencils, knives, maybe you have a kit, maybe um, you want to go to Walmart and get a kit or Michael's. Um, and just anything you can think of that's going to help you to sculpt the shape um, will be helpful. A plastic bag to wrap it in, like I said. Um, and then if you decide to paint it later on, you can. Um, um, but if you do, I recommend keeping it really basic so that it still has that ancient Greek or Roman feel to it. Um, another thing that I, I think would be really cool is to do a coin. Um, if you had any gold or silver paint, um, if you don't, you could still do a coin and like just figure out a way to mix your paint so that it kind of had a coin color. Um, this is a really cool Julius Caesar coin um, that's made of gold and a very cool um, Athens owl coin. So um, for all of you coin collectors out there, that would be really fun. And, and you don't have to make them super small because it's going to be difficult to get the detail. If you make it small, so I picture, you know, this actually being pretty large so that you can get the detail that you want to out of it if you want to do the front and the back of the coin. That's great if you just one side of a coin that's awesome too but make it large enough that you can actually get these details um, out of it the process is basically basically we kind of talked about it just to roll out that that flat slab um, half inch to one inch thick depending on how much clay you have how big you want to make it um, use a ruler and a knife to cut the shape of the relief um, in this case you might not use a ruler because maybe you want it to be kind of naturally um, rounded, more organic. Um, maybe you use a cup, the bottom of a cup to cut the basic, or the, the top of a cup to cut the basic shape if you're doing something round, that kind of thing. Just look for stuff that you can use, get creative. Uh, there are two different processes. There's the additive process of, of molding, and that's where you add clay to the surface and shape it. So as you can see, like if I wanted to create this bust, I could um, add some clay to the surface and mold it and shape it with my tools. Or if I wanted to, I could use a tool and cut away 
That's a subtractive process. I could cut clay away. Um, your process will be a combination of adding and subtracting clay, shaping and reshaping as you go. So um, it's like just kind of a complicated organic process that you're going to do. Um, use your gut. Just have fun with it. Um, dip your finger or sponge in water to smooth edges and surfaces, surfaces and to make um, the clay blend together as needed. This first little video clip I'm going to share with you is just going to show you how to create the flat slab and shape it. some possible clay tools you can use. This video is actually pretty cool. It shows really nice technique um, of how to flatten the, the slab um, and how to do that additive process I was telling you about. Notice this is the subtractive process that I was telling you about. So if you're interested in, in doing that process, you'll want to get something similar to this tool.
So lastly, just remember if you don't get finished with your relief all in one sitting, just wrap it up inside of a plastic bag, maybe spray it with a little bit of water um, beforehand, not too much because you don't want it to lose its shape, but just to keep the moisture in the bag so that the clay doesn't harden. And then when you're finished, you want your relief to slowly dry. Um, so you may not be able to turn this project in by Thursday if it's dry enough. Yeah, actually you would because you could still take a picture of it if you were filming. But it might not be thoroughly dry um, for a while later. So what you want to do is just kind of leave the plastic bag open a little bit so that that humidity and everything is still present in the bag. Um, but there's still air getting in and out so that it can dry slowly. Okay. You don't want it to dry too fast because of what can happen. So if you feel like it's starting to dry too fast, just close that bag up a little more. Don't make a very big opening. Okay. All right. Well, um, that concludes this lesson. When um, unfortunately I can't find a picture or a video showing this process, but if you want to hang your relief after it is completely dry, you'll want to let it dry for a good week or two. Um, you can then take a nice piece of wood and glue it to the back. I would use a thicker piece of wood than this because you're going to have to put your screws into there so that you can um, hang it. So basically what you're trying to do is put a nice piece of wood attached to the back of your relief. You can put your little screws in it hook your hanging wire onto there, and then you can hang it on the wall. Does that make sense? I hope so. So once again, um, doing a relief is no easy task. It's a lot of work, it's time consuming, but if that's something that you'd like to do, you're more than welcome to. Um, otherwise, you can just do the clay pot. It's a lot easier. Have fun.